Pumpage that he has uh, developed a series of movements to create a strong body or to build up your body if you have not trained for many years or have had an injury so you need to build up the muscles and uh, much of the training focus of the spine and the, to build up the muscles to the spine so you get an all-round training it is uh, around 15 different movements you can uh, do to train your body so it uh, uh, becomes uh, stronger and better uh, one way to illustrate how you become strong is to see that uh, before you have trained you don't have so many strong points uh, connected to the joint bones but after a while you develop a uh, much stronger attachment and you get uh, uh, much better uh, spine and uh, how the muscles connect to it from different sides. Uh, there are also some views of uh, Injuries, if you have an injury on the spine or the muscles, there uh, is uh, things to think about when you're building up uh, the muscles and uh, which maybe helps you also to think how you build up them and do that in, in ways where you regard pain because uh, if you have an injury or you are maybe going to train then you may feel pain and therefore it is uh, some thoughts about how you can uh, think of that. And there are also views of the body circulation and the good heart and the, what you can think of in that way and uh, maybe reflect on in your own training because the heart is an very important part in the body so so have that in mind the movements are divided into three areas it's uh, gear moves where you use uh, uh, a crossbar or a hand handle to to train up your muscles so you can train not so heavy movements and then build up your uh, muscular slowly and uh, you can build them in different parts because uh, there are training with the body and the, that training is a bit harder to achieve in some places but uh, you don't need the gear you can only use the body and then there are uh, uh, movements where you do stretching and joint moves which is important to uh, use when you do training. The <coughs> gear movements is uh, where you use uh, a bar with a weight around 30 to 40 kilos or 7 to 80 pounds and uh, you do bicep curls which is uh, you hold the bar and then lift it up to the chest and then put it down slowly and then there is a movement where you lift the bar from the waist and up above the head and that is very good for building up the arm and the neck region of the body so it becomes uh, stronger and then there is a, a handle movement where you train up your arm and you lift the handle from the waist and up to the shoulder it, with, with each arm it's good if you have a bad one arm is bad then you can uh, lessen the weights on that arm and start to move with much smaller weights and then uh, you can build them up so you can have 
different weights on different arms to, to build the arm up. So they become equally strong uh, later on. And then there is a movement with the handle where you hold the handle above your head and then let it uh, go down back your neck and uh, back. And that is very good for training up uh, between the shoulders and the, the arm muscles so you become stronger in uh, that. The windsurf movement I'm very proud of because it invokes so much of the muscles in the body and it creates so much different training in one single move so it's a very good one. Uh, very good movement uh, for building up the back uh, and that's a difficult part to build up. It, uh, I have been taught many different methods of training up, but I didn't like them because I think most of them is uh, going to use the knees bent up and down, and that doesn't feel good when you are training with weights. You feel a bit of strain in, in the knee joint and the attachment of the mu muscles in that area. So I have uh, taken forth a training which I call the windsurf movement because I want to be strong in the back when I'm going to windsurf. Because when you're windsurfing you're standing with bent knees and you hold out your arms and then you hold the sail in the wind. It's uh, very much effort in the back. But it's the back which you use in many different daily routines. So to become strong in these parts, it's very good. Because you, you feel it after a while that it helps a lot in getting a good spine and become, becoming or having a straight back. So uh, you... Uh, the body movements are quite interesting because uh, they, they, you can use the body in so many different ways in training. One of the easiest ways is to do sit-ups. You lie down on the floor and you only lift up your head and the shoulders from the ground a bit and then down and you do that three times as many as you are able to do until you feel that it's aching in the stomach. And then uh, there is uh, push-ups where you is uh, on the stomach on the floor so to speak. But uh, and then you lift your body up with the arms and then down. That's a, a push-up. But if you are not able to do a push-up because you are not strong enough in the arms then you can stand on straight arms and then try to go down a bit. But you can also you can also only stand on the arms as long as you are able to do on the straight arms. And after after a while you, you become stronger and then maybe you can move more and upward upwards and down so you train up the muscles uh, slowly that way and then there is hand standing and that's a, it's a very good move you may feel it's all oh, I'm not able to do hand standing but it's uh, not so difficult because you you stand on hands against the wall and uh, when you learn how to, to get up, it's not so difficult. So you stand on hands as long as you are able to do it, maybe 30 seconds, and then you, you go down, and then you rest, and then you go up two times more. And after a while, you feel that you become stronger in the shoulder and the arms, and it feels very good in the, in the spine, in the back, uh, down at the waist area. So you get uh, a lot of small muscles uh, moving. But when you are a bit stronger, then you can do as you do push-ups lying on the stomach. You start to 
do a small push up. So, so you do a little one and you do many little ones and then after a while you become stronger so you, you are much stronger in the arms. And uh, then there is of course running. Running is very good if you want to to uh, warm up in for training. Uh, so you run for maybe 20 to 25 minutes and then you become warm and then you can train the movements. And in running you can also do uh, an important training method, that's tempo training. It's uh, where you train the heart to become stronger. And what you do there is that you run for around maybe 30 seconds, the fastest you can. And then, then you rest and maybe jog a little bit and then you run again so much you can for 30 seconds or around 200 meters or in yards 300 maybe. And, uh, and then uh, you do this for four times during a period of maybe 20 minutes. And then after a while you feel that you can run uh, faster and faster on, on that. And then you build up the heart very good. But you must be careful if you haven't exercised for a, a while and uh, this is a heavy movement, so I suggest that you you maybe run for a couple of weeks before you start to do the tempo training because it's a it's a, a movement which creates a lot of effort for the heart. And then in the stretch and the joint moves there is. A, something which I call a windmill. It when you hold your up your arms and you, you move them around you. So you stretch the waist very good and you also stretch a bit up at the shoulders. And uh, you can do this in one way where you stand up straight and just move. Maybe to music so you get a good rhythm and you do that for a while. It's very heavy to hold up your arms because you, you hold up uh, uh, your body's weight at the outstretched arm. So heavy it is for the body to, to keep up the arm. And uh, then you can bend, bend yourself down and, uh, and you spread your legs and then you touch the opposite foot with the hand and then you switch and then you touch the opposite foot with the other hand and that's a good warming up movement and then you can do a, a windmill where you so to speak uh, go from the top of the back as in golf and then you swing down and then you go around and stretch to the other side and th that you can do for a couple of times and then you can switch side and do that from the other side and switch. You are also aware that if you change your palm so it's upside down or uh, the, the palm against the floor, you feel that it alters in the shoulders when you are doing the movement. Do the type you feel that's good for you, it, it differs. But it also, it also starts to flex your joint more if you switch. But for some people it may be a bit of hurt. And then there is a stretch move which I call the dog. It's a, a move, I think it's very good for the back. It, 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 that you, you stand, you put your hands down in the floor and then you try to push the back as far back as you can and try to straighten your legs. 
and uh, you, you try to, to do that and you stretch a lot. That's very good for running and stretch up when your muscles have been tightened up or become harder when you have run, which they often becomes. Uh, I also often do this movement also before I do the handstanding, I do some stretching before I go up in the handstanding. And I also do this when I do the push-ups from the floors. So it's, it's a way of doing that when you're doing the other movements. It's a very good moment, so it makes your back much easier and better. And then we have a cross stretch. It is where you put one leg in front of the other and then you have the knee, the forward knee bent and the back leg is straight. And then you put the opposite arm down and you get the knuckles against the knee and then you try to stretch down more with the arm and at the side. You do that which you, so you feel a bit of tension and then you change, so you use the other leg instead and bend the knee and put down the opposite arm and stretch. And that you do often in the end of a training session. The Kyoko Shinkai uh, defense movement is very good for the back and, and the, the muscles below uh, the shoulder on the back. It stretches very good and it's, it takes a lot of effort if you do, do it many times. And it's also useful in life if you would be attacked sometimes then you can push away the blow. The Kyoko Shinkai Shadow defense boxing. It, uh, I think it moves the the shoulders nice, and you you flex the joints very well when you do this movement because you you move the hand so it comes upside under the shoulder, and when you move it out, it's uh, downside, and that that flexes good, and it also flexes the what's good with a handstanding uh, training is that in many in many cases people are having problems with the shoulders of several different reasons because today we don't move so much and we don't do so does do so heavy movements with the shoulders and therefore uh, some people are not able to do too much movements with the arms above the head. It, it happens uh, after a while for some people. But then handstanding is very good because when you handstand you get a lot of blood and therefore oxygen down to the, the arm and shoulder region and then you are more able to train a bit more than you are if you are standing up straight so it's a very good moment to build up your muscles if you have uh, problems with doing things above your head I, I don't know all the physical functions in the body but there is probably an explanation why it helps. I feel it is a done tremendous difference in building up the shoulders. The tempo training is very important to, to build up uh, the circulation in the body because uh, it makes your heart to become bigger or it makes the heart to increase the blood flow. So you get a heavier flow of the blood which helps the body to, to move the muscles more. So it's a very good uh, training to do. 
I think it develops the muscles uh, tremendously and the, the flooding is very good for the body also because I think it's, so to speak, a lot of dirt in the blood system which get a good, good uh, cleaning when you start up the pumping to work very fast. So it, it, it cleanses the body and in that case it's also good. So you build up the muscles and then you get the good blood flow in the system and you force the blood to go many different, uh, more different ways than before and maybe to increase the, the, the piping system for the blood. So I, I think that's an important one, but I, I'm not a specialist on that there, but it, it, it feels and it then we have this uh, view of, of uh, getting m muscular on the, the opposite side, so you are, are more all round in your body. Because uh, if you are too strong in the back, then maybe the, the muscles uh, work a lot more there and you get a curve uh, in the spine. So when you get the curve, the muscles must be long, longer in some places and shorter in others and it creates uh, irritation on the spine and where the, the muscle is connected. So therefore it's important to have an, to have an all round body so the muscles are more normal fixed. But if you ha have an injury or you have difficulty on, on one area it's it's uh, good to to train around the area which is uh, you have the hurt hurts in because if you're strong in a, one place it maybe can help you to unload some of the efforts in the bad areas you have so so maybe if you have difficulty to move your arm in certain ways if you strengthen up the shoulder and Areas close to the shoulder, then uh, you may strengthen up the way you're using the arm, so it's not so painful anymore. So maybe you increase your your power production in in the injured area with maybe ten percent, and then unload it of uh, of uh, problems. I have used that method to build up an injury of myself, and it it has helped a lot. I have divided the uh, training into three different areas. Uh, so I, I train different parts of the musculars uh, uh, every third day, so to speak. But I, what I have in mind that that is what once I heard somebody told me that the muscles need to rest after training. Uh, I don't know if that's correct, but uh, uh, I have also heard that people train uh, very much and then the, the muscles, uh, so to speak, uh, becomes a bit damaged, but you, you build, build them up so much so the damage doesn't mean so much. I don't know if that's true either, but I've heard that. But my view of to have a, a break in training is that if you have an injury and you start to train up, and you, you train and you feel that you are getting pain or the, the body becomes hard in that area and that it doesn't feel good, then you need to relax. But uh, um, if the time is not enough for uh, the pain to go away, then you should lessen your weight and try to see if you can train that part. And if you're not able to do that, don't do the movement. Do movements around in other areas where you don't have the pain, so you build up and then maybe uh, you become stronger so you can try to train that area slowly and become strong. 
that's a, a way to cope with the pain if you have an injury or a damage. So it's uh, good to have that. What's also important if you have problems in training, it is that you must be warm in the muscles. You need to have a lot of blood in the muscles so the body helps you to do the movements uh, when you are warm. That, that, that's very important because it's, you feel that if you have a problem and then if you see that you have done easier moves and then you have got blood in the system, maybe running and maybe doing some stretching if you do the arm movements and then you feel that it's much easier to, to do uh, the training. You can feel it maybe if you do sets, sets of three in some training, you feel that maybe the second or the, or the third time is the best, where you feel that you are much stronger and that is because the blood is uh, in the system, in the muscular area which you are using. So therefore it's very good to be sure that you are warm in these regions. If I should summarize all the knowledge I have acquired of uh, training and fitness, it is, uh, I think, the tempo training which is the key of uh, becoming better. It's, it, it's, it's so important to build up the heart. It's a very good method of uh, training yourself. There is, of course, other ways to get the tempo training. Um, be sure to be on top then. <laughs>